A 2016 Gallup poll revealed 79% of the American respondents said they believed in God, but only 61% of the people said they believed in the devil. We've talked about encounters with demons, but what about the devil himself? That's right, the head honcho, good old Lucy, the dude with the horns. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the times where people may have met the devil. But that's not all the evil we're covering today, you cheeky people. From near-death experiences to ancient trickery, today's list will review our top 10 real Satan encounters that left people shook. Stick around at the end as I read some of your meany mean comments because I guess, I don't know, I'm my own worst enemy. Here we go. Number 10, Will Carroll. Will Carroll, the drummer of the band Death Angel, caught COVID-19 at the end of his band's European tour. It was a long, hard battle and thankfully, Carroll was able to come back from it. But the battle along the way may have included an encounter with Satan himself. The virus put him in a critical state which involved Carroll lying unconscious in his hospital bed for 12 days straight. In an interview with San Francisco Chronicle though, Will revealed that those 12 days were spent in a peaceful dream state. In his dreams, or I would call them nightmares, the devil would punish him repeatedly for the sin of sloth. The devil would apparently turn him into a bulbous like creature and make him puke blood until his heart gave out. These were the dreams he was having over and over again. Since recovering from the disease, needless to say, Carol has changed his lifestyle habits. For more reason than this one, it appears recovering from this awful virus we all hate definitely felt like returning from hell. Maybe the virus is from there too. Wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Number 9, Giuseppe Tartini. Everybody wants to be the best at something. But for Tartini, the best just wasn't good enough. Tartini was born on April 8th, 1692, and the guy might as well have been born with a violin in his hand. He was brilliant, a brilliant musician and composer, and he thought so too, until one day he heard someone play the instrument he dedicated his life to with a kind of expertise that he had never heard. This sent him spiraling and for 12 days, Tartini locked himself away practicing all hours of the day. While he drove himself mad, the devil decided to pay a visit to a desperate soul in a dream. He offered to make Tartini the most masterful violinist in the world in exchange for his soul. Like the wise guy he was, he asked for a demonstration. So the devil picked up the instrument and played a sonata with ease and beauty like nothing he'd ever heard before. When Giuseppe awoke, he scrambled to write down the sonata, which has become easily one of his most popular pieces of work. Its name? The Devil's Trill, and I listened to it and it is beautiful. For his entire career though, Tartini remained frustrated with the piece, as he was never able to play it exactly as he had heard it. This story is a reminder to never make a deal with the devil, as you never really get what you asked for. Number 8. Rose La Tulipe It appears that the devil and the violin kind of go hand in hand. The story of Rose La Tulipe is a famous French Canadian story and one of my absolute favorites. The woman who shared this story with me swears it was true and I can't help but believe it either. Rose begged her father to host a dance on the eve of Lent and he agreed but with one condition, that at midnight the dancing had to stop. Dancing wasn't allowed during Lent so if they continued they would be sinning. Rose agreed and everyone came to join on the night and Rose danced with anyone who would, even with other men though she was engaged. Then at 11pm a knock came at the door and the priest opened it to reveal a dazzlingly handsome stranger and Rose fell hard. The priest welcomed him and requested that he take off his hat, shoes, and jacket, all of which the man refused, saying he wasn't staying long. He immediately swept Rose in a dance and asked no one else for the remainder of the evening. As soon as midnight hit, the dancing stopped, but the man whispered in her ear, just one last dance, my Rose. With struggle she resisted, but suddenly her feet, bewitched it seemed, began dancing without her. The man then kissed her and the spark from their kiss set the house ablaze. The next morning, Rose was found mumbling around the ashes, now mysteriously an old woman, the devil having taken part of her soul with him. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. That sounds like a legend, but like, thanks for indulging me because I really love that story and I want an opportunity to tell it. So. Here it is. Other versions say that he, she actually got taken back to hell with him, and another is that her mother came and saved her. A whole bunch of stuff, but I think that one's my favorite. Okay, number seven, Richard Cable. Richard Cable might as well have been the devil himself. A squire at Brook Manor in Devon, England in the 1600s, he was known as a monstrously cruel man. He 
convinced his wife, and one night she escaped him with him hot on her heels. He killed her and her faithful dog, but little did the man know that that dog would haunt him for the rest of his days, and there would be many. At least that's what Cable thought. Cable had made a deal with the devil to live forever, but mysteriously, Cable passed away in 1677. But it appears the devil did give him everlasting life, as a spirit walking the moors at night, forever being chased by a herd of hounds. The locals even put iron bars around his tomb because there were so many sightings of him wandering around the moors. Instead, now, a red glow occasionally emits from his resting place and the howls of demons are said to gather, waiting to claim his soul for their master. Number 6. Saint Dunstan Saint Dunstan was a saint who lived in 900s and for some reason the devil loved to visit him. He was a talented metalsmith and one day an old man requested that he make a chalice for him. Dunstan agreed, but when he looked back up the old man, he had shifted into a woman and then very suddenly, a boy. Immediately he knew it was the devil, but fearing his wrath, concealed his distress and crafted the chalice. Subtly though, he put his blacksmith tongs in the fire and quick as he could he thrust the tongs onto Satan's nose and cast him from the cell. That wouldn't be the last time he saw the devil though. Dunstan would face him once again and attack the devil by hammering into his hoof and only agreed to remove it if the devil agreed never to cross a threshold where a horseshoe hung. And that's why today horseshoes are considered good luck, so take a lesson from that. Number 5. A Boy Named Scott An article written by Richard J. Bonifant recounts several near-death experiences in order to try and see similarities. Some usually describe a light or a tunnel, but after a little boy named Scott got into an accident, he may have met something much darker. On June 10th, 1995, Scott and his family were enjoying getting ice cream from the ice cream truck, as you do, but Scott was so excited he ran out from behind the truck and he got hit by another motorist. He was almost declared dead, but 8 hours later, thankfully, he awoke in intense of care. The weirdest part was that he described in perfect detail what had happened to him as if he was watching from across the street. He knew every single detail. It was really freaky. He even recalled trying to give his dad a hug, but passing right through him. The scariest thing though was who he ended up meeting. He suddenly faced a dark vortex and felt himself being drawn into it by the haunting, putrid image of the devil. Scott said he looked like a man made of rotting flesh and he tried to grab Scott, but he was whisked away into a tunnel of light, so it was kind of like the devil's trying to steal him from God. I'm glad things ended well for the little boy, getting to be with his family again, but still, not something anyone wants to see in the afterlife. Number 4. Dr. Paul Thigpen All of a sudden I felt as if the darkness had filled my whole body and that there was maybe a little part of it. It was still me. That was a clip of an interview with Dr. Paul Thigpen, who despite being raised under a Christian household, became an atheist before he was even 12 years old. That is until one day, he was hanging with his friends when he was around 17 by the water in the front seat of a car, all three of them were squished in, and a palpable darkness began pressing into the top of his head, all the way to the bottom of his toes. He said it took over the majority of his body, and though he'd become an atheist, he didn't drink or do drugs, so we know this isn't a psychedelic experience, but his body suddenly felt like a kind of superhuman strength taking over him. A voice in his head whispered, I'm throwing you into the water. To this day, Dr. Paul can't swim, and his body started moving across his friend's seat to leave the car. He knew he was going to die. Then he heard another voice that said focus on the cross. He suddenly remembered the cross his girlfriend gave him, so he grabbed it, and meanwhile his friends were like freaking out. After holding the cross for a while, he said the darkness subsided, and when he told his friend what had happened, he said, that's strange, the same thing happened to my girlfriend. He sought counsel from another friend who without a doubt said that he had been visited by the devil. Later he discovered that his girlfriend's friend was a witch, and that kind of pointed all the arrows in that direction, so who knows. Was it a demon or in fact the devil? Either way, something changed his mind. Watch the rest of the interview and decide for yourself. Number 3. The Man with the Glowing Eyes Reddit user Dabby underscore U underscore 69 had an experience as a kid that I don't think anyone could be the same after. They grew up in a pagan household which apparently meant you, you saw a lot of weird stuff. But one day, on a Tuesday in the afternoon, she was playing with the daughter of a family friend who they called Jay. Just outside as you do. So they're just playing and then all of a sudden Jay just stops dead in her tracks and points behind her. She froze and then turned around slowly to see, and I quote, a tall shadow man man about 6-7 feet tall in a trench coat and hat. The scariest thing about him was his eyes. Oh god, his eyes. Huge, red, and glowing circles, but its actual eyes were small, bloodshot, and his pupils were tiny. The man reportedly tried to strangle them, but they bolted too quick for the house. Once they told their moms, they in turn freaked out because
because apparently at the same time the man appeared, the TV had turned long static. They brought in a psychic who said, My love, the devil is here and he wants to hurt you. He was sent by someone, but we don't know who. The woman then gave a crystal bottle filled with sage and lavender along with something else to ward him off, and apparently the bottle is running out. So I hope she's okay. Number two, Father Gabriel Amorth. Father Gabriel Amorth was the official exorcist for the Diocese of Rome and claimed to have performed 60,000 exorcisms before he died in 2016. But one day in 1997, he encountered a spirit he never thought he'd see. A slim young peasant man was escorted to a small room where Father Amorth waited him. Immediately, he knew something was wrong. He requested the help of Jesus, and as soon as he did, the man began to spit and curse in English, which wasn't a language the man was known to speak. But then, the man was seething with anger and drooled directly from his mouth as he stared down the father. He tried to attack him, but the exorcist held him back with prayers, demanding the demon reveal its name. He called out, Unclean spirit, whoever you are, and all your companions who possess this servant of God, I command you, tell me your name, the day and the hour of your damnation. The man snarled, and what came out next paralyzed him. Dripping evil, the man said, I am Lucifer. He continued fighting the devil with prayer, and the windows formed ice crystals as he did so. The man also bent backwards for 25 minutes minutes howling at him, then begin hovering at three feet in the air. Was it him? We don't know. We just don't know, but it certainly sounds like it. Number one, last but not least, we kind of have to talk about this because I think a bunch of people saw the devil here. Castle Huska is one of the creepiest places in the world as it was specifically built to keep the devil inside. Legend says that the castle was built over a gateway to hell. From afar, it looks like a typical old castle until you get closer. The castle wasn't built to be lived in as evident by the fake windows and doors. Though there is a way inside, people don't recommend you step foot in there. In 878 AD, winged beast and half-human creatures spilled from the gateway and terrorized the people in the village. Somehow they held them off long enough to build the place, but they were still curious. When construction first began, prisoners in the village would be offered a pardon if they agreed to be lowered by rope into the hole. The first man to attempt it is said to have met the devil himself while he was down there. He was tied up and slowly lowered. After a few moments in the darkness, the man began screaming and begged to be pulled up. By the time they hauled him up, he looked as though he aged 30 years. His hair was white, his skin creased and speckled. They tried to discover what he had seen, but the man was incoherent and was later put into an insane asylum before dying two days later. And that was our top 10 real Satan encounters that left people shooketh. Let us know your thoughts down below, but before we say goodbye, now is the time we've all been waiting for, you meanies. Colby Cummings, Rachel, you're kind of an idiot and I love it so much. Also, I mean that as a compliment. Oh my god, thanks. He tried so hard. I don't know what that means. Thank you? I think you mean like, oh, you're such an idiot, like a love thing, so maybe that's not a mean comment, but you know, I think. Thank you? Michelle and Henry Cassavant, are you serious? Listen, sweetie, you gotta do better, lol. Maybe being 53 has made me a bit jaded, but putting Son of Sam and Larvae in Eyelid on this list does not make it scarier than a demonic story. Are you sure? Are you sure though? Because they're both like 110% real, where people don't know if this is real. It could be, that's why it's superstitious. But like, there are videos of people with gross things in their arms and eyes all the time, and that's terrifying. I used to sleep with my hands over my ears just in case spiders, spiders crawled in, so just saying. Real Rash says she is making it so obvious that she is reading a script. Plus, she's narrating the entire thing like a student asked to read aloud a paragraph from an essay. The other narrators are better. Oh, to each their own. You're allowed to have that opinion. That's totally fair. There's no illusion here. I am reading off of a script. Love you guys. Sorry. I'll try to make it better though. Thanks for the feedback. All right. Thanks so much for watching, guys. And that was all the funny comments we have time for. Thanks so much for watching, you guys. And for all the rest of you, thank you for keeping it a positive. Remember to like and subscribe for more. And remember to put more love in the world wherever you can. I'm your host, Rachel Fisher. And until next time, take care.